Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'd like to start by saying a huge thank you to my amazing subscribers. Thank you for the love and thank you for the support so far. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'd like to invite you to be a part of this DIY family and all you need to do is hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that I have for you. Today's tutorial is no exception. It promises to be another fun and detailed tutorial where I show you how to make this beautiful Ankara wrap skirt with frills and it's one that has a hole by the side so you can pass the band through just like I'm doing right now and then you can tie at the back or at the side depending on your preference so guys it's a really cute piece and I'm sure you would like to have one and if that's something that you would like to make definitely keep watching this video to the very end and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up guys thank you so much and enjoy the video To make your wrap skirt, you will need the following items. You need your measuring tape. You'd also need your fabric scissors and I've got my favorite pair of fabric scissors right here. You need your tailor's chalk or fabric marker. You need your magnet or pin cushion, basically just something to hold your pins in place. You need some pins. And of course you need your fabric i've got two yards of ankara fabric here and it works perfectly for my size however you could need more or less depending on your size start off by cutting out a piece of fabric that is one and a half times the hip measurement plus 10 inches allowance so for example if your hip measurement is 40 inches cut out one and a half of 40 inches which is 60 inches and then add 10 inches for the allowance so you'll be cutting out a piece of fabric that is 70 inches wide Fold the cutout fabric into a manageable size. So for me, I folded mine into four so that I'm able to cut out the length without any obstruction. So at this point, my width is horizontal and then I'm cutting out my length vertically. Cut out the desired length plus one inch allowance. That's half an inch at the band and then half an inch allowance at the hem. After cutting out the desired length, keep what's left of the fabric as we will need that later to make the frills. Go ahead and open up the rectangular piece of fabric that you have. It should measure 1.5 times the hip measurement plus 10 inches at the width and then the length that you want to use. Cut out the back piece by measuring half the hip measurement plus 2 inches sewing allowance that's 1 inch on each side and then 1 inch for the ease. So in my case my hip measurement is 42 inches so I've gone ahead to measure out half of that which is 21 inches and then plus 2 inches for my sewing allowance which is 23 inches and 1 inch for my ease which is 24 inches. So I cut out a total of 24 inches. So for this back piece it measures 24 inches by width and then 17 and a half inches for the length. Because we're making a wrap skirt, we'll need to cut out two full front pieces so that they can overlap each other. So go ahead and fold the remaining fabric into two and check that the width that you have is half the hip measurement minus one or two inches. If you have more, 
cut off the excess that you have so for example in my case again my hip measurement is 42 inches half of that is 21 inches so for each front piece the width that i have should be 21 inches minus one or two inches which is 19 inches if it's minus two and that is exactly what i have so that works absolutely fine for me like i said you wouldn't be adding any allowance to the front piece so please make sure you pay attention to that While the fabric is still folded, go ahead and draw in the curve. When you are happy with the desired curve, go ahead and cut along the curve, making sure to separate the folded fabric at the edge. Notch the center of the back piece by folding the back piece into two and then creating a small notch at the waist area. From the notch at the center back, mark 4 inches inwards and this will be the dart position. Then go ahead and square down that position by 6 inches. So basically, the dart length would be 6 inches vertically. Afterwards, Go ahead and mark half an inch to the left and to the right of that 4 inches mark. So basically, you want your dart to be 1 inch wide while formed and then you connect this with a ruler to the dart leg just as shown. Flip the fabric over to make the second back dart. So go ahead and mark 4 inches inwards from the folded edge and then mark the length of 6 inches for the dart leg. Then go ahead and mark a dart of 1 inch so that you have half an inch to the left and half an inch to the right of the 4 inch mark. Afterwards, go ahead and draw the dart so that you have something that looks like this. Replicate the dots that you have on the back piece to the front piece. So basically you want to take the folded back piece and place it on the front piece so that the side seams align. Afterwards, with the use of a scissors, create small notches at the point where the dart is. So you should have the one inch dart transferred onto the front piece. Now find the center of the one inch dart and then from that center, you want to mark out eight inches so that you can locate the second front dart position. After marking the second dart position, Go ahead and mark the dart out so that the dart is one inch wide. So that's half inch to the left and half inch to the right. And then square down the position by five inches. So the dart leg for the front is five inches while that for the back is six inches. Draw the dart in place and then go ahead and sew the dart in place. After sewing the dart, this is what it should look like. Place the back piece on the table so that the right side is facing up. Then go ahead and place one of the front pieces on it so that the right sides of both fabric are facing each other. Pin the sides together and mark out the sewing allowance of 1 inch and then go ahead and sew along these points. After sewing the first front piece to the side, this is what it looks like. The next thing to do is to sew the second front piece to the other side. And to do this, you want to go ahead and place the other piece on the opposite side, making sure the right sides of both fabric are facing each other. And then go ahead and pin along the side seam. After doing this, 
you want to mark one inch vertically and then mark another one and a half inches vertically the one and a half inches that you're left vertically will be the space that will be left unsewn so go ahead and sew the first one inch close and then sew from the one and a half inch end all the way to the bottom i hope i didn't confuse you so the whole essence of this is to leave a gap so that the rope can go in and then you can tie your wrap skirts so i hope this makes sense Alright guys, so after sewing the second side, you can see the skirt is coming together nicely and this is what the skirt looks like. Shaping the skirt by sewing a bend from the waist to the hip area as shown. You want to sew on half an inch just like that and then you want to sew all the way from the waist and then sew in a bend to the hip. While shaping the other side of the skirt, be sure to leave the same one and a half inch gap unsewn so that you have space to pass the rope. Alright guys, so at this point we're almost done and I don't know if you can see but at the waist the skirt is a little bit shapier. So this is what the skirt looks like and we're making good progress. So the next thing to do is to trim off any excess that you might have because at the waist we ended up holding one and a half inches remember and while at the other side it was just one inch. So if you want to cut off the excess, cut off the excess that you have and then measure out the entire hem as shown. To make the frills, cut out long strips of fabric using the fabric that we kept earlier. So remember when we cut out the skirt length, we had some fabric left over. That's what you'll be using at this point. You want to make sure that the strips are about 3 to 4 inches long. I made mine 4 inches long. However, if you want your strips shorter or your frills shorter, go ahead and use 3 inches or 3 and a half inches. Cut out as many strips as you can because sometimes you need to join two strips or three strips to each other to make them as long as you want. Depending on how full you want your frills to be, go ahead and join two or three strips to each other to make a really long strip and then you want to make sure that your strips are as long as the hem measurement times two or times three so basically for me i ended up joining three strips to each other on half an inch sewing allowance and then i now have them really long so for instance if one strip measured 45 inches because i have three of those i would now have a total strip of 135 inches which is absolutely fine so that is full enough for me after joining the three strips together or the two strips together depending on what you go for notch the center of the strip as well as the center of the hem of your skirt and then go ahead and pin the center of the strip to the center of the hem of the skirt making sure the right sides of both fabrics are facing each other There are two methods to add your frills. So basically you can decide to gather your frills or pleat your frills. I decided to pleat mine. So like I said earlier, after I pinned the notch on the frills or on the strip rather to the skirt, I decided to make pleats all the way to the hem of the skirt. So guys, just watch. You want to make sure that your pleats or gathers follow the shape of the hem. So for me, I pinned directly on the hem, making sure to follow the shape. It took me all of 20 or 30 minutes to make all these pleats, but I'm really happy with the result. And yeah, should you choose to use gathers or pleats, they both will come out beautifully. I can promise you that.
after pleating and you're happy with the result go ahead and sew the pleats to the hem on half an inch sewing allowance After sewing the pleats, this is what it looks like when it's back to the right side. So go ahead and blend the pleats as shown and the reason why you're doing this is because you don't want it bulky or sticking out just at the top. So you basically want to cut along a curve and then after doing that you can go in with your serger just to neaten the ends or you can hem it. However, for me I decided to go in with my overlocking machine and just finish off the edges of the Ankara fabric nicely so that it doesn't fray. You also want to repeat this at the other side so that you blend it in by cutting in a curve and this is what it looks like so whether you want to add two or three extra layers go ahead and do that i decided to do one more layer so i'm just going to go ahead and sew this in the same way and the best way to sew it again like i said earlier you want to place the strip on the right side of the fabric so that the right sides of the strip and the fabric are facing each other and then you want to go ahead and pleat and after you're done you should have something that looks like this so i have two layers and as you can see one layer is sitting higher than the other layer so go ahead and blend the second layer as well so that you have your um you have the distinct you know distinct length in both layers and after doing that go ahead and finish off the edges whether you want to overlock or you want to hem the edges go ahead and finish it off if you decide to hem the edges i would advise that you hem before pleating but because i knew i was going to overlock with my serger i didn't bother doing that Measure out the waist that you have on the skirt and then go ahead and cut out the band. For the band, cut out a strip of fabric that is 3.5 inches long and 35 inches longer than the skirt waist measurement. So for instance, if the skirt waist measurement is 45 inches, you want to cut out a strip of fabric that is 80 inches. And as you can see, in this case, I had to join two strips of fabric together to get a strip that long. And the reason why you need a strip that is really long is so that you can have enough room to tie, you know, your wrap skirt together. All right guys, so at this point, I ended up dividing one of the strips into two, but then I ended up regretting it because it now came out too short and then I had to go back and join it into place again. So definitely go with my advice and make sure that your strip is 35 inches longer than the waist measurement that you took. After joining your strips together, you want to notch the center of the strip and then you want to close the end of the strip close as shown. After sewing the end of the band close, go ahead and turn it inside out. Match the notch on the band to the notch on the skirt waist, making sure you pin the band to the inside of the skirt. So you basically want to pin it to the wrong side of the skirt and then you want to pin it from the middle, which is the notched area, and you want to pin it outwards on both sides. After pinning the band to the inside of the waist, 
Go ahead and sew the band to the inside of the waist on half an inch sewing allowance. Fold the band over starting at the notched area and then go ahead and pin it into place. You basically want to do this all the way from the notched area to the ends on both sides. After that, you want to top stitch the band close. After pinning the band close all the way, go ahead and top stitch by sewing close to the edge all the way from the beginning of the band to the end of the band. So at this point guys, you can see that we've now top stitched the band close and the skirt is practically finished. The only thing that I have to do is to finish off the edges of all of the frills that I have on there. And like I said earlier, I'll be going over with my serger just to overlock it and finish the edges off nicely. So guys, this is what the skirt looks like. Alright guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section below. If you've not subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that I have for you. Alright family, so this is a picture of what it looks like when the frills were nicely finished and as you can see, it looks really cute and nice. So thank you guys so much for watching once again and I'll see you in my next video on Sunday. Bye!